Good day everyone. So for today's experiment, we will perform experiment number five, the first condition of equilibrium using the dynamic kit stand. The objective of this experiment is to verify the first condition of equilibrium in which the summation of forces is equal to zero. In this experiment, we will have three types of forces. We have the force on right string, force on left string and force on the center string should be equal to zero. Let's define first what is equilibrium or mechanical equilibrium. Mechanical equilibrium is the state of an object or system of objects for which there is no change of its motion. It's either the system is at rest or there is no acceleration and therefore the speed or the velocity is constant in each direction. We have the first condition of equilibrium in which we are going to talk about forces in equilibrium. So the summation of forces is equal to zero. In this experiment, we will only have two dimensional experiment in which there is forces along X and forces along Y. So we have to prove that the summation of forces along X in the system should be zero so that it will be in equilibrium. And also the forces along Y of the system is also equal to zero. Now this is the dynamic kit stand. So the objective of this experiment is to balance the system. So there are given hook weights and you will distribute the number of hook weights on here, this is the left string, this is the right string, and this is the center string. So we have here, this is number of weights will be equivalent to the force that is applied on this string. So we call this as the force on left string or FL. While this number of weights is equal to the force applied in this string, so we call this force as the force on right string. And for this center, so this number of hook weights will be equivalent to the force on center string. So remember the reason why the direction of the forces are in this direction, because our focus will be in this knot or the point here. Now, if we will place this system along the Y axis and the X axis, we can now get the components of each force. Since the summation of forces is divided into two, the summation of forces on X and the summation of forces on Y. So therefore, we will get the components of each force. So therefore, for the force of the left string, this force will have a components of FLX and FLY. Remember, FLY is positive since it's going up, while for FLX, it's negative, the value is negative since it's going to negative X. While for the force on the right string, so it has a components of FRX, so that is positive since it's going to positive X, while for FRY, that is also positive since it's going up. Well, for the force of the center string, since it has no other components, so FC or the force of the center string is just equal to the force on Y and there is no component along X. Now, if we will now focus on forces on Y, so we can say that C, we have here the FLY and this is the FRY. So, the summation of forces along Y should be equal to zero. So remember, it should be equal to zero. So if we will add up these two forces, it should be equal to the center force or FCY, the force on the center string along Y. And because of that, that is FLY that is going up, it's positive, plus FRY that is also going up, that is also positive, minus FCY that is going down, so it should be negative, is equal to zero. And if we will transpose FCY to the other side, we can prove that the sum of the FLY and the FRY is just equal to the 
force on the center string. Now, for the summation of forces along x should also be equal to zero since our system is not moving along x. Here, we only have two forces. We have FLX and the FRX. And remember their sign, FRX is positive while FLX is negative. So therefore, negative FLX plus positive FRX should be equal to zero. And if I will transpose FLX on the other side, it will be it will be just equal. It means the force of FLX is just equal to the force of FRX. Since our system is not moving, so therefore it's in equilibrium. Now let's go to the procedure. Now for the procedure of this experiment, so we will have we will use what we have learned in our lecture, so the graphical method and the component method. So first, we will get first the equivalent of these hook weights and turn them into a vector. So the scale we will use in every weight, the hook weight is equivalent to a displacement. So we will use cm as our unit for our vector. So that is in cm. So one hook weight is equal to two centimeter. So for this, for the for this example, so we have here five hook weights on the left, four hook weights on the right, and six hook weights on the center. So in that case, for the five, so we will have here for the left that is five hook weights, and since one hook weight is equivalent to two centimeter, we will put here ten centimeter. So that will be our vector. For the right, we have here four hook weights so that will be four weights and here our vector will be eight cm and for the center we have six hook weights so therefore our vector is 12 centimeter so in the experiment so you have to put a paper at the back of this string a cardboard you might need a harder one and then you will get the angle so you will trace this so it's either you put a mark for the right string for the left string and for the center string then you have to get the angle for this so you will measure the angle between the left and right so on your trace line on your paper you will get the angle between left and right right and center then left and center. The sum of all the angles should be 360 degrees. Now for table B, so you will just copy, we will place here the number of weights, the equivalent vector in CM, and this time we will have the angle respect to positive x. So if we will go back here, so for FR or the right string, we will measure this is positive x, going here so this is our theta r again this is the positive x now for the left string it, it we will measure again the angle from positive x going here so this is our theta l and for the center string we will measure from here going here so hopefully you know the angle of that so this is our theta c now you will put that angle here, so you will have so you will have here the theta L, the theta L, you have the theta R, theta R, and you also have theta C. Okay, so in this case, after you get all the angles and you also know what are the what are the given vectors in terms of their equivalent, the length in centimeter. This time, we will now get the x components and the y components of each vector, which is in terms of centimeters. So to get the x axis or the x component, it will be the length. So for example, this is 10 centimeter cosine the theta L. And for the y, we will compute 10 centimeter sine theta L or the angle here and you will get also all the components for the right all the components for the center then you will get the resultant vector 
So for the resultant vector first, you have to add all the x components. So we have the r, x, and you also have to get all the y, so we will have the r, y. And to get r here, that is the resultant, and theta r, that is the resultant theta, not the uh, theta r here, which is the right. Here, this is the resultant theta r. So here, we will use the Pythagorean. The magnitude of the resultant vector is equal to the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. While for the, for the direction of the resultant vector is equivalent to arctangent ry over rx. And for the graphical, so again, you will use the head to tail method or the other name of that is the polygon method. So that it will be easy for you to draw the head to tail method, you will use the data on your table B in which you will put here that your vector will be in terms of centimeter and based on the angles reference to positive X. Again, you will draw it into a head to tail method. Okay, so it will be just like this. So remember, you have here your theta r, and from here you will use your the theta of the left string, and here you will use the theta of your center string. Please complete now page 41 and 42, and of course for or for the component method, please place your calculation here and this is for the graphical method and also answer number questions number one to four and remember you can answer this using what we have learned in vectors this is num for number three and number four